Hello and welcome to Vector Touch Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak, and today we are going to use InDesign CS6 to create an interesting image grid. We are going to use a couple of tools like the Gap tool, and we are also going to learn how to place several images into an InDesign document at the same time. So let me just start and create a new page. Here in InDesign, I just create a new page. And on this one, I am going to place in several images. I press W just to see my margins. That's the normal view in InDesign. By the way, if you press W, then you can always switch to preview. Or if you press Shift W, then you can have the preview mode where it's very easy to switch between pages by just pressing the left and right arrows. If you want to go back to normal view or the preview mode, you can just press W again. That's by the way, is called presentation view, the Shift W. So let me just switch to a bridge for now and uh, I am going to use these six images here. So I select them and I drag and drop them into InDesign. So once I selected them, I click on one of them and then start dragging them. Then I press Command Tab on Mac or Alt Tab on PC to switch between the applications. I switch to InDesign and here I just let go uh, the mouse and that means I have now the images prepared to be placed in to my document. So I can see also that I have six images selected in the brackets it tells me, uh, the little cursor. And it also gives me a preview of the first image which will be placed into the document. But if I use right and left arrows, I can switch between which images uh, do I want to place in. So I can always decide which one to start with. Uh, but let's just start with this one which I have here. And I'm going to click here on the top left corner of my margin and drag out a frame. But while I'm dragging the frame, I am going to press right arrow once and then twice to divide my frame into three frames. And then I press up arrow once to divide them into two rows as well. So I have three columns and two rows now. Now that looks great. And by the way, it's just very easy up and down arrows while you are still dragging a frame will divide your frame into several rows and right and left arrows will divide them into columns. So what I wanted to have is to have two rows and three columns. So now if I want to change the space uh, between these frames, I can also do that before letting go the mouse. I can hold down command and while holding down command, if I press down arrow a couple of times, I can make the space between the frames smaller. So changing the gaps and make it smaller like that. And I can completely get rid of it. And then command left arrow, can get rid of the vertical uh, parts or those gaps between the columns. It can also be called gutter. Uh, so I've got rid of those as well and completely made it uh, empty or filled in all the uh, gaps between these images. And when I let go, I can place in all six uh, landscape format images, which I, uh, by the way, are all my landscape photographs. But what we need to do now is to properly fill these frames with these images. And for that, there is a very useful option in InDesign. It's called Fill Frame Proportionally. So if I click on that, then the images won't be stretched. They will be filled into these frames proportionally. And then there is a very useful feature called Auto Fit, which I tend to also check. You will see why we need this feature. Once we have the images in, we can always uh, move them around. So let's uh, just say select one of these frames and you can see that even though we pasted in these six images together, the feature that we used uh, created six separate frames. But we can make changes to these images while still maintaining uh, the connection between them. So make sure that they are still uh, connected to each other with a very useful tool called the gap tool. Uh, the keyboard shortcut for this tool is U on the keyboard. And once the gap tool is selected, we can make changes to these images in a very special way. We can click on one of the edges and start moving the images around. 
As you can see, because we had the auto fit option turned on, these images will automatically change in size as well when I'm moving one of the edges. So all four images will interact. What happens if I drag one of these uh, edges down? You can see all six images will change automatically in size, depending on where I put the edge of the images. Now you can imagine that with six images, it already looks great, but when you want to create a grid of, let's just say, 50 different images, it would be a pain to do this one by one, but if you use these features together, you can actually create a grid and customize it the way you want it very easily. And InDesign will automatically resize the Im images and also reposition them. So what else can we do with the Gap tool? We can break these edges or these divisions between images as well, break the grid. If we hold down Shift while dragging one of the lines, we can only selectively change that edge between the two images. So that will break uh, the edge and will create an even more interesting effect. We can also do this anywhere else, like here if I hold down Shift, we can break it like that and then it will create a little empty space there in the middle of the uh, grid. Let me just go back one step, I didn't want to do that. And I would like to just show you one more thing is that is you can also change uh, the gaps around the images. So not just between the images, but around as well. So even here, if I click, I can still change uh, the edges of these two images at the same time. Now let's just see this in uh, presentation mode. So I press Shift W and it looks great. But what if I would like to have a little space between them? So I would like to add a bit of white space between the images, just a very thin line. Now for that, uh, it's better to add strokes around the images instead of adding uh, the gap. So I'm going to select all six of them. And here on the stroke, I select paper, then I click away and I press Shift W again just to see the preview. So that's a faster and much easier way to add that very thin line between the images. And of course, if we change the stroke size from one point to let's just say five points and we go back to presentation view again, then it will be much thicker and it's very easy to change the size of the stroke. So that's a very clever way to just add these very fine lines between the images. And I would like to show you one more thing, how to add a rounded corner on one of the images. Um, we can select any of these images and then click on that little yellow box. And if you hold down shift and drag one of the corner points, that means you will only add a rounded effect or rounded corner effect on the selected corner. If I drag this little star around uh, without holding down shift, then it will add the radius on all corners. Now that's what I wanted to avoid. So I hold down shift and that creates the effect that I was looking for. So let's just have a look at this again in presentation view. I press shift W and there you have it. The image grid created fully in InDesign and everything is really easy to customize and edit. I can also move the images around by just grabbing onto them with the content grabber. And if I hold down shift, it makes sure that I don't move the image around and I don't have empty spaces. So the content grabber is also another cool feature which you can use to reposition images in their frames. That's all I wanted to show you today. I hope you found these features useful and you don't have to follow this tutorial step by step. You can just implement any of the effects or techniques that I showed you in your own workflow. Thanks a lot for your attention and I hope you will join me next time as well.